Hi, today's video is how to fix your electric gates if you've got them and if they failed. So I have got electric gates, both of them have gone. Neither of the motors is working. It's a uh, NICE, nice system. And in the control box, these are the two sets of wires that go to the two motors. Uh, so there's three wires in each one. Gray is what's called the common connection. And the brown wire will be for opening the gates and the black wire for closing the gates or vice versa. Uh, next to the motors in the motor box is a capacitor that goes between the brown and the black to produce an out of phase signal to the one that is not being activated. So for instance, this is common um, when you do um, an open, let's say. This will have 240 volts on it. The other one will be out of phase, probably read something like 150 volts on the multimeter. Put your multimeter on 600 volts AC. Uh, this will confirm that your electronic control unit is working as to whether you get uh, voltages appear on these wires or not. Uh, for my particular case, uh, I was having voltages appearing, but the motors were making no sound, weren't moving at all. So then I had to move to uh, taking the covers off the motors and investigating. So to get to the motors, there's two little screws here and here that have to be removed. You get to the motor underneath. Now I've already cleaned this one out. As you can see, most of my motors are normally sitting in loads of water because the drain holes have uh, blocked up. Um, they quite often uh, block up. This one uh, was very, very muddy and spidery, slugs and things in it. So what I recommend doing is getting a hose pipe, um, washing the whole thing out. Obviously the water's gonna flood everywhere, but these motors are waterproof, as is the box that holds the capacitor. And then I got my hoover out, got an old empty paint tub, made a hole in it for the hoover connection to go in, just sitting in the top, tube the other side vacuum from the hoover creates a vacuum in the paint tub which allows the tube to suck all of the water out of your motor box and it fills up the paint tub rather than filling up your hoover with water so at the same time you're clearing out the box try and clear out the drain holes so right down here um, there's a little plastic tube that allows the water to drain out that was blocked the other plastic tube is where the uh, electrical supply for the motor comes in and somewhere in here, you will also have a box that contains the capacitor and a bit of a wiring junction. So I already had this out once and cleaned it up. So let's just take that out again. And there's four screws on the top, which I've already undone. Inside, you'll find a little junction, strip terminal, and this uh, capacitor which is of value 10 microfarads at uh, between 420 and 470 volts, depending on the lifetime. And basically, like a lot of electronic systems, this capacitor has uh, failed, probably gone to quite a low capacitance value. Uh, I measured it hasn't shorted out, so that's the only other way it can fail. And I know it's the capacitor because I replaced it with another capacitor I had in my spares box, which is actually 12 microfarads, but again, high voltage. Very important that it is a high voltage mains type uh, capacitor. See on there, it says uh, either 420 or 470 volt, depending on the uh, classification spec. Uh, so I replaced it with a 12 microfarad capacitor and lo and behold, the motor then jumped into life. Previously, there was no sound or anything coming out of the motor. Uh, while you're testing the motor, make sure that these cables are well out of the way. You don't want to have one of those pinched and cut into because uh, it is a main supply. So uh, similarly, be careful about touching anything that's uh, got live mains on it. Uh, stand well clear with your hands well whilst you're activating the unit. And also uh, if it goes off on its own, preferably disconnect the power to the main control box, just to be careful. So basically the way to fix it was to change these capacitors. And as I say, I've done one previously. This one over here, although it's a larger capacitor, I'll change it for a smaller one once I get the correct part. Uh, we'll now see that if I activate the remote control, see the gate is now operating properly. Where again, 
previously there was no noise out of it at all so that's how to fix your electric gate if you've got a similar problem that I had while you're at it give it a good grease up around these joints there's a grease nipple on uh, this joint over here as well which could do with greasing very often these splines get worn on these electric gate motors uh, they can often wear out so much that the spindle of the motor turns independent from the uh, control arm should be held tight by this tiny little hex key bolt on the end um, but it's not really tight enough what's going to be better is to change that little hex bolt to a proper bolt that you can tighten up a bit better and also we can put a lock nut on it so we'll do that at the same time just found one in the garage happened to be the same thread uh, what does that say on it TMS 8.8 whatever that means say 10 mil probably standard metric uh, bolt give your control arm or the gate a bit of a wiggle while doing up the bolt and doing up the lock nut makes it a little bit more secure okay uh, so gates are now working or will be once I get uh, all these new parts uh, have a look at the description I'll put some links in for where to get these capacitors and just out of interest if you prize the end off uh, this capacitor you can see inside how catastrophically it's failed with lots of horrible gunky stuff it's a metallic looking substance that's oozed out of the capacitor so obviously it's not very healthy well if you have the same problem as me that's how to fix your uh, nice NICE electric gate the motor has a code of ME3000 on it. Uh, looks up on the internet, seems to be a fairly common motor. So that's it. Thanks for watching. Bye.